Texas now has the most restrictive law in the country. It bans most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The new law does not account for rape or incest, only medical emergencies. It's the first type of abortion ban in any state since the Supreme Court's landmark decision of Roe versus Wade back in 1973. They gave women a uh, constitutional right to the procedure. And listen to this, the new Texas law also allows private citizens the right to sue anyone who performs or helps a woman get an illegal abortion. And that could include anyone who drives a woman to a clinic. So they're giving incentives out there for telling. Um, let's talk about this. Join us to talk about it uh, in this law. What it means for women of color is Yante Metzger. Uh, the, she's the director of state media campaigns from Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Thanks for being with us uh, this morning. Um, I don't know what to say about this. Uh, you know, women's rights uh, is something that's really important for me as well. Even though I'm not a woman, I got kids, I got daughters, I got a wife. Obviously, there, there's no exception in this for rape or incest, only medical emergencies. I, I'm wondering what was your immediate reaction upon hearing the law? I mean, upon hearing the law, I just, it, it's the most extreme thing we've ever seen. And with the Supreme Court's decision last night, you know, they, um, have allowed Texas to turn back the clock 50 years, um, and they have mm -hmm. used procedure as a smoke screen, effectively telling people that, you know, you're right and to your future and your own medical decisions just don't matter. Yeah, I mean, look, six weeks into a pregnancy, uh, many women aren't even aware that they are pregnant uh, mm -hmm. at the six-week mark. Um, what, what kind of questions is your organization getting about this? Oh, we're getting a host, a whole host of questions. Um, mainly, is abortion still legal in my state? Um, where can I go to access mm. it? How can I afford this? Um, does my insurance cover it? And I think it's really important to also remember that Texas already has a whole host of restrictions um, on abortion. Um, you have to have a 24-hour waiting period. There is mandatory counseling. There is mandatory ultrasounds that may not be medically necessary. So it's already extremely difficult. And when you add this ban on top of that and the time that it takes to make a decision, to secure funds, to make an appointment, it is essentially impossible to get an abortion in Texas at this point. Well, they're, they're obviously all, all women of, uh, of all colors uh, get abortions, but why is this law so dangerous, particularly for black and brown women? Absolutely. I mean, we cannot understate the impact that it will have on those communities. You know, they are the ones who already have the hardest time accessing care um, when it comes to health care, and they're the ones who are going to be hit hardest. Two thirds of black women are the ones who get abortions, and this law will outlaw abortions that happen um, at six weeks, which is 85 to 90 percent of abortions right now in the state. Um, and when you think about what it means to travel out of state and the cost associated with that, whether it's transportation cost, childcare cost, getting somebody, um, getting time off work, for example, um, lodging, food, all of those things, it is going to be black women and people with low incomes who um, suffer the most and bear the brunt of what this law means. What, what do you think it's going to mean? Like some, some women can't afford to leave the state. Uh, that's one of the, uh, the suggestions, a lot of uh, the results of What's going to happen? A lot of people aren't going to go to other states to try and get an abortions, but this could go into other states as well. So what kind of impact do you think this will have on some women? Uh, going back to the archaic ages, we've heard of illegal abortions back in the day and, and leading to those things type of things. So I, I, what kind of concerns do you have about that? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely concerned about it. You know, we think that women are going to self-manage their abortions without medical supervision, and that can be um, not, mm -hmm. that's not the way that we want people to have to deal with this issue. Um, again, this is a constitutionally protected right that these that women have. As you mentioned, people cannot afford to travel out of state often. And we have seen studies that suggest that as many as 46% of people seeking abortions will be forced to carry their pregnancy to term against their will um, with this law in effect. So it's going to have a real impact on the ground. It's already having a real impact on the ground. Our clinics are um, talking to patients nonstop. Um, people are scared. They're confused. They don't know what's going to happen. And as you mentioned, you know, across the country where um, this is not going to stop with Texas. It's going to happen across the country and yep. with mm -hmm. real potentially get it. Um, mm -hmm. 26 states are all poised to ban abortion. And, and, and then with the uh, the Supreme Court ruling 5-4 yesterday with, with what they did in their, their decision yesterday, uh, do you think this is kind of paving a way to overturn Roe versus Wade? 
You know, this is what Donald Trump promised when he got those three justices on the court. He promised that he was going to nominate people, confirm people who would overturn Roe, and we're getting what he said he would do, unfortunately. We definitely have to mobilize and stand up, and we need to elect people in legislatures who are going to side with reproductive justice and reproductive freedom, and who are going to protect our rights, because if the courts won't save us, we need to make sure that Congress and um, the lawmakers do, in many cases. You know, it was, it was fun, not funny, but the irony in the whole this whole situation is like you look at certain people that, that say, you know, whether you're pro uh, uh, life or or, or uh, against abortion uh, or for abortion or whatnot or pro uh, choice. There are a lot of people out there who are pro life, but then they're also pro death penalty. That, it, it, does that make sense to you at all? Yeah, I think when it comes to this issue, there's a lot of hypocrisy. Um, definitely, we see it with the anti-maskers, we see it with the um, pro-death penalty folks. But I think it's really important to remember that with this law specifically, you know, you are putting a bounty on the heads of people who provide care, on um, people who provide abortion, people who help folks access abortion. And I think that we can all agree that that is just yeah. absurd and it's extreme, it's draconian and has no place in Texas or in any state in this country. Yeah, that's the crazy part about it, that other people can actually just uh, uh, call and, and, and tell and basically be incentivized for, for telling uh, if you're trying to help somebody out to get an abortion as well. Uh, we'll see where this leads to uh, Iyanthe Metzger. Uh, we appreciate you bringing your perspective and your thoughts to this and uh, uh, being here on Start Your Day with us this morning.